All right, so we wanted to uh, go through some of the homework problems that you had and make sure that you got the right answers and knew what you were doing. So uh, this is from uh, 7.1, section 1, 296. I gave you 2 through 20 even, so I've got the first uh, 6 up on the board here because that's all we've got room for. The basic idea, again, was to look at the premises that we have and try to figure using modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, uh, and disjunctive syllogism, the conclusion that could be derived from that. So, for example, here at number uh, 2, we have S, if S, then M. Well, the basic setup there would have to be a modus ponens, right? If S, then M, S, therefore, M, from lines 1 and 2 through modus ponens. Number 4, we have B or C, not B. Well, with that wedge there, it's going to have to be a disjunctive syllogism. So it's either B or C. If it's not B, it has to be C. Right, one, two, disjunctive syllogism. Obviously, those are pretty easy. Uh, with these, now there's three. So you're going to use two of these, get rid of one. Well, lines one and two are not going to work together because in order to use the disjunctive syllogism, it would have to be the negation of this not J. Uh, we just have the not J. It would have to be not not J. We don't have that. So we're going to be using lines 2 and 3, which set up a modus tollens. If S, then J. Not J, therefore not S. 2, 3, modus tollens. Uh, number 8, we have if S, then W. Not S, S or N. Um, Again, 1 and 2 are not going to work because that would produce that fallacy of denying the antecedent. But 2 and 3 would make a disjunctive syllogism. It's either S or N. It's not S, so it has to be N. Okay, 2, 3, disjunctive syllogism. Uh, 10, if H then A, A, A or M, G then H. Um, 1 and 2 are not going to work together because that would produce the fallacy of affirming the consequent. Uh, 1 and 3 are not going to work together because you can't have the horseshoe with the wedge uh, on any of our four forms that we've looked at so far. Uh, but lines 1 and 4 would certainly work together to make a hypothetical syllogism. Uh, you want to make sure you get it in the right order. So again, if it helps you draw out the squares and circles so that you get the pattern there. If square, then circle. If circle, then triangle. Therefore, if square, then triangle. So remember that that's the order, the configuration that circle has to go in. So that would be the H that's used. So the one where the H is the consequent would be the first line. That would be here, G, then H. And then the one where the H is the antecedent, that would be line 1, H, then A. So now we know that the square is G, and the triangle is A. So if G then A is what would be derived from 1 and 4 through a hypothetical syllogism. And then 12, we have if K then not R, not R, R or S, if R then T. Um, and looking at this one again, looks like 2 and 3 would be our obvious choice for a disjunctive syllogism. It's either R or S. It's not R, so it has to be S. Right? 2, 3, disjunctive syllogism. All right, well, that's all that we had room for on this board, so let me go ahead and erase this, and we can take a look uh, at the others as well. So for number 14... <clears throat> We have if N, then not E. Line 2 is not, not uh, S. Line 3 is not E or not S. Line 4 is not S or N. And we have to derive 5. So looking at this one, uh, it looks like, really, we have two options available to us. The most obvious one would be lines 2 and 4. 
So the disjunctive syllogism, again, think of that square or circle, not square, therefore circle. So if we take line four, that's not s or n, we know the square is not s and the circle is n. So that's lines two and four would derive n through a uh, disjunctive syllogism. Now, because the order doesn't actually matter, you'll learn a different rule about this later on, but basically the order for anything other than the horseshoe doesn't really matter. You could technically have done it with two and three as well. Um, you know, the not E or not S, not not S. So it's either this one or this one. If it's not the S, then it has to be this one. So you could have derived not E from uh, 2 and 3, disjunctive syllogism as well. So, uh, but this is the more obvious one, the one that the book probably would expect you to use. Uh, 16, we've got not K, not K, then not P, not K or G, G then Q, and we have to figure out from line 5. Well, our obvious solution here would be lines 1 and 2 would make a modus ponens. Right, again, modus ponens, if square then circle, square therefore circle, not K then not P, not K, therefore your circle would be not P. And that comes from, what did we say, uh, one, 1 and 2, through a modus ponens. Okay. 18, we have R, then M, then D. Uh, M, then C. Line 3 is D, then M, or E. Line 4 is not M. And we have to derive the conclusion for line 5. So looking at this one, um, perhaps your initial instinct might draw you towards 2 and 4 because they're simpler solutions, but that's not going to work because that would give you the fallacy of denying the antecedent, which is invalid. We want valid forms. So um, it looks like what we're dealing with here is actually lines one and three. So if you look at it here again, we've got if R then M then D, if D then M or E, therefore. So remember again, your antecedent is the square, consequent is the circle. So now we know D is the circle, so we'll assign this M or E the triangle, right? So we're setting up for a hypothetical syllogism. So the conclusion, of course, that we would draw would be if square, then triangle, which would be R, then M, then M or E, right? So R, then M, then M or E from lines 1 and 3 using a hypothetical syllogism. And finally, number 20, we have A or W then N then Q. Uh, number 2, whoops, then Q. Line 2, Q, then G. Line 3 is not A. Line 4 is Q, then G. Then A or N. And we have to derive line 5. All right, so this one uh, looks like our options here would take us to 2 and 4 as being a modus ponens. 
Again, just think about it in terms of the squares and the circles. Your antecedent is the square, your consequent is the circle. So if square then circle, Q or G, there it is again. Therefore, square then circle, square therefore circle, which is the A or N that you would get from 2 and 4 through modus ponens. Okay? So that is the homework uh, for section 7.1, and I will be back uh, with another video for 7.2 and 7.3. Uh, trying to keep these a little bit shorter because they take forever to download. Uh, but anyway, like always, if you have any questions, feel free to email, and um, we'll talk to you in a little bit.